black hat and golden retriever theory in relationships if you don't know the golden retriever is the person that is doing the chasing in the relationship and the black cat is the one getting chased a lot of the times in healthy successful relationships the guy is the golden retriever chasing the black cat the women that are the black cats in relationships that are the ones getting chased tend to have more successful and happier relationships when the guy is the golden retriever and i can tell you from firsthand experience when i've been the golden retriever it doesn't work out you just don't want to be a golden retriever girlfriend i can promise you what <laughs> you know i will always be the first to admit that i know next to nothing when it comes to the nuances of human pair bonding but if saturday morning cartoons have taught me anything it's that cats and dogs don't go together in fact they're mortal enemies choosing to form unholy alliances in the event that their comfortable living situation is compromised or in the event of armageddon and when the dog chases the cat in the meantime it's not so much a playful endeavor to try to form a romantic bond it's more of a primal desire to want to destroy the animal because let's Let's face it, cats are jerks. But I guess your metaphor is apt in a different way. When a black cat crosses your path, it's a sign that things are supposed to end badly, right? Well, I can't imagine the worse kind of luck than the woman who decides to take dating advice from a lady who feels the need to shellac a pound of makeup on her face before giving out dating advice that makes no sense. Yeah, that checks out. That sounds about right. Things that guys do that are cause for immediate friend zoning. Number one, not paying for a first date. I just can't even wrap my brain around why you think that that would be okay. But here's the thing. I'm not entitled. Liar, liar, liar. I just think that if I'm going out of my way to get ready, to give you my time, give you my energy, and we're having such a good time, the very least you can do is pick up the tab. Controversial for some reason, but I'm not even saying that they have to pay for every single thing forever and always. Okay, I'm not saying that. Liar! 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 I'm just saying, if you want to leave a good impression, lead with your best foot forward. Whatever you say. How much you cost, anyway? Well, ain't that a nice way to talk to a lady? Oh, I didn't know I was talking to a lady. You know what? I just thought of something. This woman's nonsense might actually help me with the dispute I'm having with the Intergalactic Space Power Company. Does anybody know the going rate for a woman's feminine energy on today's market? I mean, we don't need to go into specifics. I just need a rough estimate based on the aggregate kilowatt hours from the last few seasons, and that ought to do it because I might actually be able to make that a tax write-off. Because the thing you're forgetting under your own logic men are selling their time and their energy just as much as you sure we may not be wasting hundreds of dollars on face altering chemical products but we are spending money for gas parking our laundry soap shaving supplies as well as our masculine energy and should we not be compensated for that or is it just different when it happens to you i went on a date once with this guy who was decked out head to toe in designer like valentino shirt balenciaga shoes rolex watch head to toe dripping in designer i was like cool whatever we had a really good time at the first bar we just got drinks everything was kind of closing and i'm like thinking maybe i should go maybe i should go home no like let's go to another bar and the second that our waiter came over with the bill was like okay gabby let me be kind let me offer to get this round he didn't stop me let me tap my card on the tapper so i tapped in and i immediately checked out my brain went so fast from this has potential to absolutely not I have never ordered an Uber so fast. I even paid for like the, the one that got there sooner because I, I just could not even sit there and pretend like I was okay with that. You're boring. You're fucking dull. You have nothing to say. You are a one hived mind twat waffle. Uh-oh, someone get this broad a bowl of pretzels because someone's sounding a little salty. Her description of this guy was based solely on his expensive clothing, which is an instant green flag, but then you tried a power move against the Duke of Pookyton. You tried to bluff the Duke in a feeble attempt to emasculate him and get him to pay instead of suggesting 50-50. But you forgot the golden rule, sister. Nobody bluffs the Duke. He instantly called your bluff and you fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And once you realized you weren't gonna have an easy payday, you were out of there to go home and cry into your can of cream cheese cake frosting while watching reruns of Real Housewives of South Jersey. Am I the only one who's terrified that that show could actually be a real thing? If you want to go half seas, fine, we can go half seas. But just know that the minute that we do that, we're friends. Like, we're cool. It is what it is. Also, don't try to kiss me. Don't, like, we're cool. We're buddies. We're friends. 
Whatever chance you thought you had is not out the door. So in other words, your affections are for sale. Good to know. I mean, this is nothing new. We already knew this. Within your borderline incoherent rambling, you've never mentioned anything about men with good hearts, traditional values, or even a strong sense of loyalty. You've mentioned money so many times I've lost count. It's good to know where your priorities lie. And the second a man doesn't meet that specific dollar value, then he gets reserved to the friend zone. And I won't lie, woman, that's pretty messed up. Or at least it would be. But I have a feeling most self-respecting men kick you to the curb the second they find out that you're a financial succubus. Number two, when they talk about their ex or they talk about past subs in a way that they're still trying to get over it. I went on a date with this one guy and it wasn't our first date. We had dated before in the past and then we circled back around months later. We went out and immediately, immediately, like upon like a first initial hug, he goes, so I'm a little heartbroken right now. And I honestly thought he was joking until he proceeded to tell me about his most recent situationship that he had ended that same day, that morning. This pivoted so quickly from a date to a therapy session. Like, f the small talk and the how are yous. He went straight from zero to 100 real <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> Well, obviously, talking about your exes is strictly reserved for the ladies. How many men in your friend zone have you relentlessly bothered at 11.30 at night to complain about how your loser boyfriend canceled on your date night to take his Harley out to Sturgis, and you're pretty sure he's cheating on you, but you still see a future with him, and you want to make things work, and you're extremely sorry that you're bothering your friend this late, and you know he has to be to work in six hours, but you don't want to be alone, and you could really use a friend right now. So you guilt trip him into coming over as you subject him to four hours of ugly crying until you're ready to go to sleep and he has to make it to the hardware store to open up and deal with the angry droves of customers on the first day of 4th of July weekend. Meanwhile, Keith gets up to all sorts of strange on his Harley and I get to clean up the mess. So thanks for nothing, Kathy. Number three, if they flirt with any one of my friends or any girl when I'm around. I don't care if it's like an innocent flirt. Okay, if I'm there, you, sh you should be focused on me because you've already just let me know that it's not going to be safe with you in a relationship. So why would I even invest my emotional bond to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course that guy's gonna flirt with your friends. I mean, I've been stuck in the same room with you for two minutes, and I can already tell that your friends are slightly more interesting than you. But here is where we get to the ultimate hypocrisy. Women like to claim that the friend zone is a place for friends. A place where you can preserve the relationship because you're too afraid of losing it. But here you are, all but admitting that it's a punishment for men who don't please you financially. But here's the thing. You can't friend zone the kind of men that you date. They're self-respecting men, not simps, and they won't tolerate that kind of disrespect. It's time to wake up and smell the 90s, sister. It's kind of hard to put a self-respecting man in the friend zone when he's already forgotten your name and what your face looks like. I'm gonna be honest. The random things that trigger me are the craziest things. I'm sitting in my car, literally sitting in my car, trying to pull myself together because I did what any mom does and I pulled an emergency drive to my daughter because she needed to do something and drove an hour because she's at college to drop something off and was just so thankful that like I could do it for her and fit her in my schedule and the littlest thing she said just triggered me and this is the second time in a week that my child has triggered me without even meaning to so we're getting ready to leave and she's like well I'll be home because we're, I'm gonna be at the Clemson Notre Dame game because dad's gonna take us all. You think that's nothing, right? Like nothing, right? And it instantly, like she instantly saw a switch in me and she's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, nothing. Cause you know, I don't talk about that stuff. I don't want her to worry. You don't know what words mean, do you? Woman, if you gathered all of the power of your brain cells, you might be able to gather enough intelligence to tie your own shoes, but that's only if you're lucky. Here's why. You don't want your daughter to worry about your post-divorce baggage, so you don't tell her. And yet later on that very same day, you record yourself documenting what's bothering you in excruciating detail that you post it to your TikTok page. So in other words, every single person on the entire planet gets to know about your petty 
opportunity to force squabbles with your family, but your family doesn't, even though your family will most likely see this and witness your cringe on full display with the knowledge that you weren't willing to tell them, but willing to tell an internet full of faceless strangers. Yeah, I can't see anything going wrong with that. So last week she says, oh, well dad said for Christmas we're gonna go to Gatlinburg and be there for the holidays and do Dollywood. That man never once ever went to Gatlinburg or Dollywood ever in his entire life before he met me. That was where my family always went. That is, I'm from Tennessee. That's something we always did. It was a bonding thing. And now that's what he's trying to do. It's like he's taken every single tradition I've ever done and now turned it into his. Everything I've ever done. Oh, for you. Listen, I don't know much about Dolly Parton, okay? But I heard Dollywood's quite nice, and that's about all I know. But despite my obvious lack of knowledge of classic American country music icons, even I know that you do not hold a claim on Dollywood. You do not own any piece of that deed. I don't even need to know your bra size to know that one. You're making it sound like he stole your culture and claimed it for himself, completely disregarding the fact that your ex-husband probably enjoyed the time he had with his kids at Dollywood. And who can blame him? I hear the food over there is actually pretty good by theme park standards. Hell, I might even go check it out because unlike you, I think I can actually afford it. Now I find myself triggered because during the hardest time of my year last year, of me literally trying to stay alive, me dealing with all the craziness of my ex, the lying, the alienation, him calling me, him having my children call me. Why? Not because I did anything bad, because I wore spaghetti straps and all that. And his only way, the only way that he could use my children against me was to say I was on social media. What's that shit? It's a shit smell. Is that you? It smells like popo. Oh man, I never get tired of looking at some classic plays from the Modern Woman's Playbook. Man, we got all of the classics here. 294 Alpha, create a sob story that's incredibly vague to the point of incoherent. We also have 572 Epsilon, use as many emotional buzzwords as possible while refraining from citing specific examples to back up your claims. And let's not forget 3297 Gamma, over dramatizing basic language to the point where you look like a victim. And my personal favorite, play number one, there are no such thing as too many fake tears. When in the hands of an experienced con artist, these plays can be brutally effective, but in her case, we can see right through it like the paper bag from her lunch of lukewarm fried chicken. What do you think, gentlemen and gents? What's your favorite play from the playbook? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm a photographer. I make silly TikToks. Honestly, I'll probably progress more with my TikToks because at first they were just pictures, but the more I was stressed, the more I hid in myself, the more I tried to survive, the more I took refuge in TikToks and finding stuff that, you know, resonated with me. And honestly, it's the way I realized what a covert narcissist was or what, how bad my abuse was or mental abuse or financial abuse and all that stuff. Like literally TikTok has saved my life in so many ways. Oh boy, I see where this is going. So you started going on TikTok and got brainwashed into thinking that because you weren't impossibly happy all the time that you were unhappy and that your marriage was to blame. And because you believe that you're perfectly innocent in this mess, everything must have been your husband's fault. So you started posting testimonials about minor spats that you blew way out of proportion because you grew addicted to the attention and validation that this social media has garnered you. So naturally, you thought getting a divorce would be the best thing for you. You, but there is one problem to this plan. You're the kind of woman who constantly loses games of tic-tac-toe to herself. So you clearly had no idea how badly your plan was going to blow up in your over-filtered face. Who would think, Mom, we're going to Gatlinburg for Christmas would trigger me? This man's had at least three vacations in the past year to like really nice places with my children. At least three that I know of, because he has them lie to me. He has them outright lie to me about so much stuff. So who knows, God knows what they've done. And then the holidays and all that. Now my triggers are, oh, he gets to just go and take my kids to the Notre Dame and Clemson game. I wish I could do that. I can't afford to do that. Why? Because he screwed me. He lied about owning a company. And there's ways to prove it. Give me some money. Give me some money. 
woman, we get it. You want to go on lavish vacations, watch football games, and claim that you gave birth to your children asexually. There's no need for such dramatics. You couldn't care less about any of these things because your butt hurt. Come on, woman, let's be real here. You could have done all of those things that you're complaining about if you just stayed married to the guy and accepted that your life wasn't a fairy tale. But because some TikToker convinced you that you were unhappy for reasons that only make sense in that void where your brain should be, you decided to butcher the golden goose. And instead of admitting that you might have made a mistake, you're gonna play the victim and demonize the father of your children instead. Good for you, woman. So stunning. So brave. I'm trying to be happy and and show my kids that like life can move on, but the triggers, the random triggers that had me sitting in a quick trip parking lot trying not to cry. Why? Because my ex has so much money. He makes more than $18,000 a month easily, or at least he did. He made almost a million dollars the year before we divorced and then lied about it. He has all the money in his fingertips to do whatever he wants, to buy my children, take them on trips, take them on vacations. Why well, literally have the bare minimum to pay my bills on top of trying to restart a career because it was a hobby because I was a stay-at-home mom. And now I sit here with the triggers. A fucking trigger because he's going to the Clemson Notre Dame game with my kids. I can't just randomly afford that. Hell, I can't even get them all in the same room at the same time. So I sit here. Well, I guess what I learned this week is that you can be rich in friends or family or love, but the only thing that matters is being rich in money. Hang on a second. I thought this guy was a covert narcissist who was making your life a living hell. Why are you talking about how much money he has? You'd think that regardless of the amount of money he made, you would be happy to be free of his evil clutches. But it sounds like leaving him made things worse because all you can do is obsess over his money, which just goes to show that you are a victim of your own stupidity, woman. You probably thought the American divorce court system was on your side and you'd get an easy payday, but you forgot one key thing. Men who make six figures a year have accountants lawyers, and financial advisors who are paid to ensure that you would get next to nothing in alimony. And it seemed to work because you may be able to hide those wrinkles with makeup and filters, but there's no hiding that you are a failed gold digger. And that's gonna do it for today's video, gentlemen and gents, and as always, if you find that my particular brand of humor is bringing you to the brink of laughter, then why don't you scroll on down and click that like and subscribe button, ring the notification bell, leave a couple of comments, share this video around, and let's give the good old-fashioned middle finger to the YouTube algorithm. Work hard and sleep even harder, gentlemen and gents, and until next time, peace out, homies.